Praise the Lord. What a joy to have you listen to the living, active, sharp, piercing, and discerning word of God from my mouth. This is Sweet Melodies, a Bible reading program aired on Grace Life Kumi Podcast. I am Funke Oahuna. I will be reading from the pages of the scriptures. I pray that as you listen to the word of God, gains entrance into you and you join your faith with the word of God for your spiritual edification and all around profiting in Jesus precious name Amen God. Today we are going to be studying Proverbs chapter 6 and I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation. Verse 1. My son, if you could sign a loan for an inheritance and guarantee his debt, you'll be sorry that you ever did it. 2. You'll be trapped by your promise and legally bound by the agreement. So listen carefully to my advice. Verse 3. Quickly get out of it if you possibly can. Swallow your pride, get over your embarrassment, and go tell your friend you want your name off that contract. Verse 4. Don't put it off and don't rest until you get it done. Verse 5. Rescue yourself from the future pain and be free from it once and for all. You will be so relieved that you did. Verse 6. When you are feeling lazy, come and learn a lesson from the tale of the tiny ants. Yes, all you lazy bones, come learn from the example of the ants and enter into wisdom. The ants have no chief, no boss, no manager, no one has to tell them to do. That's what 7 and verse 8 says. You will see them walking and toiling all summer long, stockpiling their food in preparation for winter. Verse 9. So wake up, sleepyhead. How long will you lie there? When will you wake up and get out of bed? Verse 10. If you keep nodding off and thinking, I'll do it later. Or say to yourself, I'll just sit back a while and take it easy. Just watch how the future unfolds. Verse 11. By making excuses, you learn what it means to go without. Poverty will pounce on you like a bandit and move in as your roommate for life. Verse 12 to 13 says, Here's another life lesson to learn from observing the wayward and wicked man. You can tell they are lawless. They are constant liars, proud deceivers, full of clever plots and convincing plots. Verse 14. Their twisted thoughts are perverse, always with a scheme to stir up trouble, and so we strive with every step they take. But when calamity comes knocking on their door, suddenly and without warning they are undone, broken to bits shattered with no hope of healing verse 16 it says there are six evils god truly hates and a seventh that is an abomination to him 17 putting others down while considering yourself superior spreading lies and rumors spilling the blood of the innocent plotting evil in your heart towards another gloating over doing what's plainly wrong. 19. Spouting lies in false testimony and stirring up strife between friends. These are entirely despicable to God. Verse 20. My son, obey your father's godly instruction and follow your mother's life-giving teaching. 21. Fill your heart with the advice and let your life be shaped by what they've taught you. 22. Their wisdom will guide you wherever you go and keep you from bringing harm to yourself 
their instruction will whisper to you at every sunrise and direct you through a brand new day. Verse 23. For truth is a bright beam of light, shining into every area of your life, instructing and correcting you to discover the ways to godly living. Verse 24 to 25 says, Truth will protect you from immorality and from the promiscuity of another man's wife. Your heart won't be enticed by her flatteries or lost over her beauty, nor will her suggestive ways conquer you. Verse 26, prostitutes reduce a man to poverty, and the adulteress steals your soul. She may even cost you your life. Verse 27, for how can a man light his pants on fire and not be burned? Verse 28, can he walk over hot coals of fire and not blister his feet? 29. What makes you think that you can sleep with another man's wife and not get caught? Do you really think you'll get away with it? Don't you know it will ruin your life? Verse 30 says, You can almost excuse a thief if he steals to feed his own family. 31. But if he's caught, he still has to pay back what he stole sevenfold. His punishment and fine will cost him greatly. 32. Don't be so stupid to, to think you can get away with your adultery. It will destroy your life and you will pay the price for the rest of your days. That's 33. You will discover what humiliation, shame and disgrace are all about. For no one will ever let you forget what you've done. 34. A husband's jealousy makes a man furious. He won't spare you when it comes to take revenge. 35. Try all you want to talk your way out of it. Offer him a bribe and see if you can manipulate him with your money. Nothing will turn him aside when he comes to you with vengeance in his eyes. Praise the Lord. This scripture is speaking to each and every one of us as believers. Amen. And it's actually in segments. Uh, verse 1 to 5 speaks about the words of wisdom. And this word of wisdom applies to our daily living. One wisdom we need to apply in our daily living is to stop standing as surety for friends. Praise God. A friend who wants to take a loan should be capable of standing out for himself and sticking his neck out for himself. The Bible explicitly you know, advises us to avoid standing you know, as shorty for others. Praise God. Because you may never be you may never be you know be, be free from the embarrassment and shame that comes with it that comes when your friend fails to pay back the loan praise god and the wisdom the scripture tells us to do is to find a way of quickly getting our friend to pay off okay or we'll get our names of the, the the contract and agreement of the loan so that you can be relieved you did praise god and there's another life another part that tells us about life lessons which is from verse 6 to verse um, 15 where we, we are referred to go and learn from you know the ants praise god they have no boss they have no manager but you know they are able to live, live life maximally praise god and that happens because they apply some certain level of wisdom praise god and then um, verse 16 to 23 makes us understand seven things that god hates as believers, we should we should you know ensure that these things are not our our life practice. Praise God. And what are these things again? From verse 17, he says, putting down others down. You know, putting others down. Why you consider yourself as superior? You think yourself greater than others at all times. You you are you've made a practice of spreading lies and rumors. You don't have a full uh, understanding of what's happening. You share it around. You know, you, you, you join the team of the, they say, they say. I heard, I, I heard someone say, you really don't get the picture. You really don't know what, what the truth is, but you spread, you know, the false information you have, you have received. That is not 
uh, you know, the practice of a child of God and we should desist from it. Praise God. Spilling the blood of the innocent. There should be no level of pressure you should be, you know, you should get involved in that will warrant you to be comfortable spilling the blood of another. The scripture frowns about it. God hates it. Praise God. 18. It's another, you know, gives us another um, area where, where God hates. Amen. And it talks about plotting evil in your heart towards another. You know, this nowadays this happens when you become jealous and envious of another. We see that even amongst brethren, we should avoid plotting evil. Don't don't ask the brethren to follow a path you know that evil is lying wait for that person. Avoid it. Praise God. Gloating over doing what is plainly wrong. Today I heard someone say that it is you know it is decent for people to dress decently. It has come to this level for us to keep stressing it like this. When something is wrong, it is plainly wrong. Don't you know chocolate it and ice it and you know decorate it to make it fit the believer's lifestyle is not is not praise the lord gloating over doing what is plainly wrong god hates it spouting lies in false testimony please we have to desist for me stirring up strife between friends stirring up friends between, you don't you don't become more friendly when you separate friends no you don't you don't actually take the place of another you can just be who you are you don't need to eliminate somebody to have a place praise god and these people do because they want to they separate friends because they want to be the chief friend or the major friend praise god we must avoid it god hates it these are entirely despicable to god and the scripture says that we should do what obey our father's godly instruction and follow our mother's life-giving teachings you see your father and your mother are actually not secluded to the, uh, your biological parents your father and your mother can be your spiritual parents also praise god and this godly wisdom they give those godly instruction they give us this life-giving teachings they give us are there to fill our hearts with advice so that in our sleeping in our waking they guide us they they, they put us on the right track they whisper into our ears in the midst of uh, you know the crowd they tell us what is wrong and what is right and you know they guide us to do the right thing these things are important for us amen and then verse 24 to 30, 35 makes us you know judge between truth sticking for the truth or facing the consequences of not sticking with the truth amen and the, the case of the immoral man is being used here but also as believers, when we don't stay true to serving God and serving Christ, then we become promiscuous. We are adulterous. Amen. Not sticking to God, Christ Jesus, who is the who? The husbandman of the church. We are the bride of Christ. Praise God. So when as 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 his bride, we keep flirting all around or we are immoral in our in our stance and our work with him, our service to him. What are we doing? We are we are you know arousing jealousy in, in, in the husband man and we should avoid this praise god we shouldn't get involved in it so that uh, the destruction that comes with it will not be our portion in the mighty name of jesus and we will not attract god's vengeance in our direction thank you for listening god bless you Beloved, I believe you have received God's word in faith. May we not be here as alone, but do us of his word. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit today and always. Amen. Jesus is Lord.